Philadelphia because the support of the Angel Speaker Congress, which is happening on the 26th of April. Thank you guys so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having us. Well, and Mark just came into the studio, right, uh, wearing a green recyclable t-shirt, and he has a recyclable bag, and he's got a recyclable dog toy on the table now. As he jumped all the way. He jumped all, <laughs> all the way. <laughs> That's so cool coming from the mud and telling he jumped all the way, because they're officially known as Orang Hijau. Yes, yes. Torturing up Orang Minya, but Orang Hijau, so uh, <laughs> that's what we're on for. Well, tell me, what's tell it that you know. Helping Angels all about? Can you tell us? Uh, helping Angels was started by Poise Liang uh, quite a while ago. It's mainly a Facebook-based uh, uh, movement, and it's about random acts of kindness, compassionate kindness, to humans. Just make your time available, volunteers that actually are out there helping in orphanages and uh, sharing their time and contributing in the kind of other people. Okay, so it's for humanity, it's not just for Mother Earth then? It actually was uh, started as a movement for humanity. Now, uh, Poesy decided it's time to expand it for Mother Earth as well. So that's why we're here, green humanity. Fantastic. Okay, I think it's kind of like a subset that you know, kind of goes together. Humanity on the one side, Mother Earth, they're not two totally separate entities. Correct. Yeah, so it's, if you will, I can see the natural progression from humanity into Mother Earth. So, I yeah. think the biggest problem problem is the separation, you know. We live nowadays in concrete cities and we're disconnected from Mother Nature. Uh -huh. People don't grow up anymore with animals and with an appreciation of the beauty that we have out there. Biodiversity is seen as an asset to actually make money from rather than something that holds the planet together, cleans the air, cleans the water, yep. captures the water when otherwise nowadays the floods in Thailand, they are only happening because there's no more space for the water to go. 16 years ago, the same amount of water actually fell down, but in those days there was still space for the water to be absorbed by Mother Nature. So we are creating a lot of the problems that we face nowadays by pushing Mother Nature back. That's just true. sad truth right there. But it's true. And I guess uh, when it comes to compassion and kindness and empathy towards Mother Earth, you've got to start by having the same kind of feelings and qualities towards other fellow humans as well. And that's because you care enough about people and you care enough about the Earth. Yeah. It's a whole, whole ecosystem. You can't sort of separate one from the other. Uh, what yep. people should realize is that when it's Earth, they're like, well, Mother Earth, yeah, so. So what? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, uh, okay, chop down a tree, let's add for you to breathe, you know, you complain about pollution, you, you know, Mother Earth will treat you as well as, or as badly as you treat her. Mm. So humanity, you know, there is a connection there, there is a whole ecosystem mm. there. Mm. It cannot be separated. So what goes around comes around, whether for better or for worse. <laughs> it's true, you know, I guess the problem also comes from the fact that uh, a lot of us think that, you know, we're only here on Earth for a short amount of time, yeah. and, yeah. you know, what can we do? to help contribute, might as well just enjoy our time yeah, yeah. on Earth, you know? Yeah, yeah. So here we have uh, Matthias and Norina who will dispel all of this and tell us how it is possible for each individual to contribute to humanity and to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, what we've realized is that when someone is asked to do something and you, you use compassion, yeah. it's, it's very easy to move from them and become a contributor. Because when you start to feel it, you know, rather than, oh, I'm just talking now and yeah. you know, put down this kind of thing, uh -huh. when you feel it, then you're moved to do something. And that's what we want to do. Everybody's a leader. Not this, okay, you know, it's just Matthias. I mean, he's great, yeah. but the whole point of this thing is to say, each and every one of us can do something. I'm here today. I'm, I'm just going to be moderating on the day. So I'm not saying this opportunity to do a lot of my, you know, yakety yakety yakety. But yeah, everybody can do. You're a kid, yep. you're a mom, mm -hmm. you're a busy person at work, you're the person who says, hey, what's in it for me? Look, everyone can do something. And that's important. So it's crossing the bridge from talking the talk into walking the walk. Absolutely. It's very really really interesting that you use um, the word compassion, kindness, and empathy. Because these are words that you normally use for fellow human beings, right? And so you're going to use that as um, the motivating factor for people to be able to relate to Mother Earth and say, that why don't you do the same and have the same kind of feelings towards Well, she's Mother Earth. Earth. I mean, that, that says it. She, she is Mother Earth. The source of all life. Yes. Yeah. Actually, everything comes. Even our business activity, without the oil, the gas, the timber, and everything else that Malaysia is making money with, mm -hmm. where else is life and money going to come from? If we destroy the farm without compassion, then we take away the foundation for our future children to live and survive. That is what sustainability is all about, leaving enough behind for future generations. What Norina said earlier was interesting. You, you say, what is 
in it for me, right? Mm. And and that is the one question that a lot of people need to kind of have an answer to because that will motivate people to act, right? So how does one individual really contribute to what helping Mother Earth? Because the world is so huge. Yeah, but this is the thing, you know, I mean, everybody wants to be a hero, but nobody's expecting you to be a superhero and yep. put your underpants on outside your clothes and fly into the air and, and save the world. Although a lot of us would uh, like that. Yeah, I don't know. Male fantasies, I don't know. You know, but... Uh, <laughs> no, nothing close to that. But this is, this is the thing. Everybody's a hero. I mean, I've got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. And they're my little equal heroes. How do they do it? In their way. They follow their grandfather around and switch off, you know, the lights and the television. and they, So they're small contribution. Yeah. You know, they're still little. So they're like, hey, mom, we'll save money, you know. We'll take our showers together. And I said, okay, I'm giving you, like, you know, five minutes, find a way to get yourself clean in five minutes where I'm serving water. But they do it in their own small way. So there's no excuse for anyone to come back to this whole thing. What's in it for me? It was said. What's in it? Yeah. What's in it? Said it? You know, you do business like Malaysia. Rubber, tin. Okay, who's giving you all that? Mother Earth is Palm giving oil. you all that. Palm oil. Yeah, there you Mother go. Earth is giving you all that. Yep. The air that you breathe, Mother Earth is giving you all that. Mm. You want to chop down all the trees? She's like, cool. I don't give you any more air. But I think Sandhya has a very interesting point because most people, they are asking the question, what is in it for me here and now? Because what we're talking about there is maybe our children will suffer in the future. Mm. Yeah. Or... Uh, the people one year down the line in flooding might be suffering, but unless we feel it here now. I remember a conversation with a friend of mine uh, from Penang. She said, oh yeah, Matthias, I'm happy to help you plant some trees over the weekend, but the rest of the week I have to work very hard and earn money for my loved ones. So, mm. makan money. So, that is the, the primary driver. So, I have been starting to talk as well about, you know, where is the green money? But at the same mm. time, we need to get the compassion component. Right. Because that drives us for ethical and for, and for emotional reasons to reconnect back and be, become the people that actually are on the ground doing loads of compassionate, everyday, small, hero, green initiatives that will make a big well, difference. You, you, don't want to live, uh, you, know, you don't want to have to go out of the Clown Valley in order to be able to breathe air. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Okay, all right. Matthias is a global environmental speaker and entrepreneur, and what he says makes absolute sense because you do understand as an entrepreneur that it needs to appeal to people yeah. and, and yeah. makes economic sense as yeah. when people will actually live a greener, right? Yeah. And you are going to be the moderator for the Helping Angels Bigger yeah. Congress happening on the 26th of yeah. April. Because, look, there's so much that needs to be said. You know, and, and I'm just going to manage it. But yeah, the experts are here. One of them's in the room with us. You know, yes, Mark, you have so much to, to share. I'm just a little kampong boy from a small village in Germany. If I can do random acts of kindness, everybody can do it. Okay. My, fa my father was a bricklayer, my mother a housewife. Everybody can do it. Right. It all starts with a passion and conviction. So, so speaking of which, you got random acts of kindness for Mother Earth. Now, we're talking about, you know, how an individual can affect change on a huge scale. So, like, what, okay, you being Mr. Green Man, how would you kick it off? I think a great one to start off with, both at home and in the company that you're working for, because we can do it in our private life, in, in our business life, yeah? save electricity. Every month you get a wonderful electricity bill that tells you how many kilowatt hours and how much money it costs. These are going to go up. So you can help your pocket and you can help the environment at the same time. Even in your business, some companies, some buildings in Malaysia have electricity bills of hundreds of thousands of ringgit or even millions. Oh my if we goodness. start helping to reduce that, we help the planet because electricity doesn't just come from the plug in the wall. It comes from power plants. Mm -hmm. These power plants burn coal, gas and other things. We might need more of them in the future. If we save electricity, less is more good for the environment. Okay, Marcus, when you say save electricity, I mean, yeah. how would someone do it at home on a personal basis as opposed to one at, in a business environment? Try and avoid using aircon. One aircon is 750 horsepower. Oh, I'm setting it off right now. 750 watts. There's huge consumption. My little fan in the bedroom uses 16 watts. So a fraction of the electricity consumption. Try and use natural cooling. We need to build buildings that have passive yeah, cooling where we, we don't need buildings. where we don't need uh, electricity at all. I've stayed in buildings in Malaysia. It's cool because the way they were designed, the building materials that they use, it's already happening. Think about the kampong house before. Mm, so even when point. we yeah. make things 
things like that. But on a practical level at home, switch the lights off. You know, encourage your kids as well. Encourage the grandpa, grandma. Monitor your electricity bill. Set the target every month. For, you reduce it by 10%. Saves you money, helps to save the planet. Kill two, two birds with one stone. Yes, definitely. Now, now Norina, yes. what would you do as a random act of kindness to save dear old <laughs> Mother Earth? Please, I do tell. Putting on my superhero mood. I'm not the kind of girl. I'm not the kind of girl that switches on the aircon. I don't like the aircon. But aside from that, um, I want my kids to do this. Okay. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're going to be eight. around. They're five and eight. They're going to be around to suffer everything that you know what we've done mm. or not done. That's as true. Far as Mother so Earth. Start young. I'm starting them young. Yeah. And it, it's a simple thing, like for kids, you know, uh, Martin has brought in his uh, recycled water bottle, right? I know, it's my, fabulous. It, it's great. I tell you, my son, my five-year-old, he loves it. He's got one, my daughter's got one, and then they go to school. And then, you know, it's passed it on. Yeah. Because a pay it forward is someone's done something nice for you. Uh -huh. And you pay it forward, not necessarily back to the same person. So in this case, we're saying do it for Mother Earth. And how, you know, my family does it, my, how my children do it, yeah. is they pass the message on. So take something like recycle something, you know, schools do it. They're really quite good. A lot of schools now do it. Yep. Recycle. Teach your okay, kids how to recycle. So it's exponential. They teach it to their classmates, to their cousins, to their friends, and they bring yeah. that back to their families. Yeah. And it sounds like a really common sense kind of thing, a really logical, but people don't normally think about it that way. I mean, you're a parent, and you're doing this, and your kids are doing it. And the main thing is, when you start young, right, they don't feel like it's tall. They don't feel like they're making effort. To them, it's normal. It's an everyday life. So can you imagine? And all of that is cool. It's cool, it's right? Cool. It's cool. It's green. It's cool. And you've made it cool. And if they start off like that from a young age, and then they bring the pay it forward, it influence their friends and stuff, so our future generation actually will, will be better people for this past than we are. Yeah. It, it's really simple. This is the message I think that we have to drive home, that it's something that everybody can do. It's not rocket science. You don't have to be specially qualified. You just have to be passionate and believe. So I'm just wondering that, you know, it's, it's, it's something that everyone can do and anyone can affect change. Then maybe the stumbling block right here would be your mentality. So maybe we need like a re-education of our minds to some extent. What do you think, Matthias? Mentality and lack of compassion, lack mm. of connection with the planet. You're okay. not feeling it. That's why you're not acting. Yeah. How do we feel it? Yeah, yeah. You're feeling. Go back into the rainforest, connect with the trees, connect with the beauty. Mm. Especially Malaysia is one of the top countries of biodiversity. Beautiful Amazing. rainforest. Well, the yeah. oldest rainforest and in the world. Mm. On, sa on Saturday, I was in Bukit Nana's forest reserve, bang in the center of the city. Uh -huh. I asked the guys there, you know, who is coming to see this place? They said over 90% of visitors are non foreigners. <laughs> so have Malaysians lost the connectivity, the compassion, the feeling, the the interlinkedness with Mother Earth. I have to say this though, only in the urban areas mm. I find that the disconnector mm. is bigger here because mm. when you go to the smaller towns, um, to the other states, the people there are more aware mm. and they do live within nature and with nature so mm. I think they do make a but more There effort. is more of a synergy. That's why I'm, I'm just so grateful that I have a comfort to take my children back to. Mm. First thing I do is like take off your shoes, go and run around there because you, you can watch them. But I want you to feel, I want you to know what happens when, you know, there's not that. So we should all go back to our comfort it's not just once a year for Chinese New Year or Hari Raya or the yeah, See how many trees you can identify. <laughs> wow. Uh, so oh, banana tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what made me a greenie. My kampong, surrounded by forests, surrounded by Mother Nature, I played all the time out there in the midst of Mother Nature. Right, so there. any one of us can make a difference role. Now, Marcus, you're just telling us that there are a few random acts of kindness that you, for the past few days and past few weeks, have been doing for Mother Earth. Yeah, yeah. This lunchtime, I had my veggie pasta Ooh. instead of uh, meat on the plate. Uh, I'm not sure whether our listeners know that, but especially beef has a very, very high carbon footprint. It ain't that good for the planet. So the more meat-based your diet is, the more your environmental impact is. Then uh, other things this morning, shower, just a little bit of water to get me wet. And then a soaping session, you know, you can do it without water. And then when you wash off, so you reduce water. As well as shower is much less water consumption than a full-blown bath, you know. Take a bath only, you know, occasionally. I never shower with hot water. I don't need a hot water system. I always use the cool, fresh water because when you heat up the water, you use electricity. Again, yeah. one way of saving electricity. Then, you know, physical things. We buy too many things that we don't need. And that's another reason why I think living green is much cheaper than not living green. Because out there, you know, shopping, people buy 
a uh, hundred times more clothes and shoes and other things than they need. So, you know, my random act of kindness is I need less things than the marketing machinery out there will tell me. So I produce less weight yep, and yep. I can share with friends even. I don't have a car, for example, jalan jalan, bicycling, <laughs> those are random acts Yes, of I have mind. noticed that you don't have a car. So can you share with us, how do you go around Kuala Lumpur without a car? Is it a cab? Or? I mean, I use cabs quite regularly, but even a cab runs with NGV, which okay. is less pollution hmm. than a petrol car. So that's another benefit. And very often I get rides from friends because they know, so I can even share good time with my friends. Car and I can pooling. share a smile. Car pooling yeah. is, is something people can do. Car pooling. Yeah, that's fabulous. But I think a lot of people, you know, in terms of car pooling, I think it's always the inconvenience. First of all, you've got to get, you know, like-minded people who are heading into the same direction, for example. So I think that puts some people off. Class. What do you think? Yeah, my friend told me the story. She went with her work colleague and then yeah. his wife suspected they had an affair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Of so there we go. All but, right. Hey, you know, loads of simple things we can do. I think one of the most beautiful things we can do is we always think when somebody's birthday or something to celebrate, we need to give them a physical thing. Mm. But actually, give them your time. Give them a nice meal. Give them something random act of love and compassion that is dematerialized. Instead of doing everything with physical material, let's do it with smiles. Let's do it with love. Let's do it with time. That is eco-efficient. That is a massive random act of kindness. Totally agree with you on that You one. know what, Matthias? I am so loving this session. I'm just doing so, so much. Now, Matthias, you were telling us about a very, very valid point just now in helping Mother Earth. You yes, can share that with yes, us right now. Yes. What we buy has a huge impact on where this planet goes. At the moment, we buy a lot of the cheap stuff that has been produced with loads of waste, loads of pollution. Yeah. We are actually part of the problem with our consumption behavior. Too much and things that have a lot of environmental impact. We should shift our purchasing power to things that are actually healing the planet rather than destroying the planet. What well, do you then, mean? Like what? What, what, the, what I mean is, uh, for example, um, your food. Organic food is obviously more expensive, but that one is not associated with all the pesticides that are being used to produce the other food that then end up in the soil, end up in the water, and maybe even have a negative impact on our health, which yep. costs the health system a lot of money. Yep. And to clean up the water in Malaysia is very, very expensive. We don't really see it because we pay very little for the water, but we waste a lot of water. So our consumption should be focused on uh, buying the things that are good for the planet on an, on an everyday basis. Yeah. For example, you know, instead of you buying throw away stuff, you know, instead of you getting the cheap plastic bags, get your bag that you reuse all the time. The eco bag. Uh, the car, you know, buy an eco fuel efficient car yep. rather than a normal random car that sucks loads of petrol uh, for 100 kilometers. All these things make a difference. If we are more conscious about what we buy, then we're helping the green economy to, gr to grow. We're helping those producers that produce eco-friendly uh, uh, things. Like I have organic cotton clothes at the moment. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're better for the environment and it feels good. They're better for you. Yes, they're better for and me you as look, well. And it looks fantastic. Now oh, the problem is yeah. when... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you threw me off there. I'm like, look, yeah, really cool. that cool. Look, yeah, 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 are, you are you watching? Are you listening to this? <laughs> yes, yeah. very cool. I'm You're learning as I go along. Yeah. Very good. No, but the question here is, yeah. right, like a lot of us would like to buy green, mm. but the problem is a lot of the green stuff available from food to clothes and cars is that it's more expensive than normal items and a lot of us can't afford that because it's produced in such small amounts that they're expensive. You're exactly right. But the more of us buy it, then the prices will come down. And because we are avoiding pollution, so we don't have to pay all the taxpayer money that otherwise uh, has to be paid for. One good example is water. It looks so cheap, the water. It doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. But do you know that they're just building a water pipe from Pahang to Selangor at a cost of originally budget 3.9 billion. Latest estimate is 8 billion ringgit. No way. Calculate how much you are contributing as a taxpayer to that. That is the true cost of environmental excess of the lack of random acts of kindness for mother nature when we treat the mother nature when we consume too much it costs huge amounts of money to clean up the soil to clean up our health problems that come through pollution to clean up the lack of available uh, consumable water and this affects us all you know yes. so each and every one of us can make a difference by just doing a random act of kindness i, I just wanted to very quickly say you were talking about food and there i know a lot of people say oh, yeah very expensive mm. I can, and and the point is made about it 
it's more demand, they'll bring the prices down. So people can also grow some of their own stuff. Yeah, My you know. kids get, like, well, they get this, um, you know, I'm a cheap mom. So they get this real, <laughs> they get this real from, you know, they, they plant, you know, you plant a seed of compassion, you plant, mm-hmm. literally, you can plant a seed of, yep. you grow. The, the, the stuff that they get, they get the thrill of being able to harvest that, they, they're eating something that I know is safe, they know is safe. Yeah. I mean, everybody wins. And it's building, building, up it. time. It's building up the connection back with Mother back Nature, with, with the natural earth. things, exactly. with the plants, with the green, Absolutely. with the hijau. And the moment you start, you'll only grow. And it's yeah. something that is definitely worth investing in, you know. And, okay, there is a Facebook page um, for this. It's uh, facebook.com slash green humanity, right? And uh, if you like the page, you'll see that there is actually a poll on what other random acts of kindness you can do for Mother Earth. And there are actually quite a few responses on the page. Lots of eco-heroes out there. Lots of people with some very great ideas. Mm. Plant a tree, take your own bags. I mean, people, you know, all it needs is for someone to sit down and say, what can I do? Yeah. What can I do? That's you know, true. someone here said, order food moderately, just how yeah. much we can eat. And that's something that's so simple. We just need to be mindful. Because a lot of us don't purposely over order. We just, oh, yeah. it's a habit, you know? Yes. We, we just get used to it because we feel like, especially when you've got friends or family. And you want to like, Yeah, you yeah. know, there must be more food. You know, yeah. nobody should be left wanting. But then we, we just, over, and then what happens? Yeah. It's just wasted. It's just thrown away. I think it's a societal thing. We always want more. And then yeah. it's the whole consumerism problem. More of this, more exactly. of that. And we create more. Waste. Then you mentioned littering, something very important. Yeah. Throwing rubbish. I mean, when you right. talk about random okay. acts of kindness, okay. right? That is just a small thing. Mm. Gosh, you know, not yeah. littering mm. is actually a big help for Mother mm. Nature. Yes, yes. Because I've seen people throw rubbish out of the car window and I cannot stand that. I don't understand why mm. can't you keep the rubbish and go home and throw it or recycle it? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm almost a stalker. I almost like, okay, I'm gonna, if it's safe, I'm going to stop my car. I'm going to follow them and then give them back their rubbish. I, I'm terrible. I don't like it. I'm already out. I'm Would you throw it back home into your own bedroom? Would you litter it out exactly. there? No, not really. Exactly. That is what you're doing. The planet is the bedroom for all of us humans and our children. And we need to keep it in good shape. I think it's a lack of ownership, I think, mm. is what it is. Yeah. We don't feel yeah. like we own this yeah. place, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. it's not ours, it's okay. Mm. And it's going to a point where, I mean, if I have rubbish and it drops on the floor in the car park, I would pick it up, even though I know the cleaners will come. It's just, you know, when you talk about compassion and empathy mm. and kindness, it's also a conscience that you yes. have to build yes. in people. Like, yes. no one's watching, no one's, uh, you know, judging you, but yeah. you know, and it bugs your conscience. Absolutely. Your conscience and your ethics. It's there, it's present in you. That's why you're doing the right thing. That's what we need to get to. All right, very, very cool session we've had. We've just had with Matthias and Norina. Now, any last words before we wrap up and sign off and kiss you guys goodbye? Hey, Posey, thanks for making me go botak with the whole <laughs> empathy movement and saving loads of water, loads of shampoo, and all of this hair gel that I used to use. So keep it up the great work. Yes. Green humanity, that's our future. On, on the ball empathy movement, right? Mm. This is also part of the helping angels mm. uh, effort. Yes. You know, to kind of better Mother Nature and humanity, really, right? To raise awareness. Otherwise, I would have never been bald enough to go bald. <laughs> And, you know, I love your joke. My, my mother, she was crying on the phone when what? I told her. When she saw me, she said, oh, you look younger. And I told her, I have more women smile at me now than before. <laughs> it's all good to go about that, guys. So the world is lovely again. Oh, yeah. You know, it is funny, cool. yeah, Marina, when a man is bald, he has a certain kind of, like, sickness and manliness. Yeah, and we know about this. Okay, about we need to get Matthias out the door, so let's not put him too much. <laughs> all right, right. Mom, you know? Yeah. yeah, but listen, everybody can be an eco-hero. Yes. It's cool to be green. Just click like, like, go to the, you know, do something, mm. do something. Yeah. Facebook.com slash Green Humanity, pay it forward, everyone. Yeah. Not go, just a day, but every go day. Go eat you all the way, every day. We need you, all of you beautiful eco-heroes. Thank you so much. Be kind, be compassionate, and have empathy. Stay with us here on The Jam Break. We'll be right back.